Before we dive into this forgotten World War II survival technique, subscribe to In the Beginning so you never miss these lost innovations that kept soldiers alive in extreme conditions. Because what you're about to learn isn't a novelty. It's a method that outperformed blankets, wool coats, and even modern sleeping bags in wet, freezing environments. For the next minute, picture soldiers bivouacking in Northern Europe. Rain and sleet soaking every layer of clothing, frost creeping into the ground, and the bitter knowledge that if warmth failed overnight, lives could be lost before dawn. Conventional insulation failed repeatedly under these conditions, but one simple, inexpensive method, a specialized wadding layer, Transform survival in ways that modern campers and survivalists would do well to understand. The principle of the World War II wadding layer begins with the problem soldiers faced. Standard blankets trap some heat but also absorb moisture from rain, sweat, and snow, which drastically reduce their insulating properties. Wool, while resilient, becomes heavy and conductive when wet. Synthetic sleeping bags existed only in prototypes, leaving troops exposed. Field engineers discovered that layering certain lightweight fibrous materials between uniforms or inside shelters created a microclimate that retained warmth without relying on bulk. This wasn't guesswork. It was a systematic solution informed by observation, experimentation, and necessity. The materials used in this technique were surprisingly accessible and versatile. Soldiers collected loose cotton batting, straw, down feathers, and even shredded wool scraps, then compressed them into flat sheets or small pads. Unlike blankets, which remained bulky and limited airflow, the wadding was designed to trap air pockets while allowing moisture to escape. The key was the structure, a light, loose, fibrous layer that could be layered, folded, or tucked around the body without compressing completely. Modern insulation science confirms this principle. Heat retention relies on trapping air not material mass. The soldiers of World War II discovered it empirically, decades before thermal efficiency charts existed. One of the most effective applications was in layering within clothing. Field reports describe soldiers sliding these wadding sheets between their uniform layers, particularly around the torso and extremities, where heat loss is most critical. The fibrous padding acted as a thermal buffer, preventing body heat from escaping through contact with wet outer garments. In extreme wind or sleet, the wadding maintained insulating properties even as outer layers were soaked. Soldiers noticed that while a soaked blanket became heavy and cold, the wadding retained warmth and, interestingly, dried faster after only minor exposure. For anyone dealing with cold weather survival today, replicating this method means using lightweight batting or natural fibres between base layers rather than relying solely on outer insulation. The wadding layer also transformed shelter insulation. Soldiers used it to line bunkers, tents, and makeshift dugouts by placing a thin, fibrous sheet between the ground and sleeping mat. They significantly reduced conductive heat loss to the cold earth. In one field report from 1944, a medic unit noted that soldiers using a wadding layer stayed comfortably warm on wet, frozen soil 
while those without experience severe hypothermia risks. Applying the same principle today, campers can use natural fibers, synthetic batting, or even shredded clothing under sleeping pads to replicate the effect. The key is not compression. The fibers must remain fluffy enough to trap air. The versatility of the technique extended beyond body and shelter insulation. Soldiers sometimes used wadding in improvised gloves, boots and mittens, stuffing cavities with fibrous material to insulate hands and feet against frostbite. Even small scraps tucked into hats or collars created noticeable warmth. It's a modular approach. Rather than carrying a single bulky blanket, you can distribute lightweight insulation wherever heat loss is greatest. Modern survivalists and historical reenactors can adopt this method with cotton batting down or wool scraps, adjusting the thickness depending on conditions. It's a system designed for adaptability, mobility, and immediate effectiveness. Understanding why this method worked requires recognizing the role of air pockets in thermal retention. Moisture disrupts heat transfer by conducting cold and displacing trapped air. Traditional blankets, once wet, lose their trapped air and become conductors rather than insulators. Wadding maintains structure even under minor compression, allowing air pockets to persist and continue insulating. Soldiers discovered that this principle allowed them to remain warm during prolonged exposure without relying on weight or bulk. By creating multiple thin wadding layers instead of one heavy blanket, they could achieve higher thermal efficiency while remaining mobile. For anyone applying this knowledge today, the steps are simple but effective. Collect a fibrous material such as cotton batting, down, straw or shredded wool. Compress lightly into sheets or small pads. So, you'll want to insert the material between clothing layers in critical areas, like the chest, back, underarms, and of course, the extremities. It's also quite effective to line shelters or sleeping pads with it, which helps prevent conductive heat loss. But do remember, avoid compressing the fibers too tightly. After all, it's the trapped air that really provides the insulation. And, well, make sure to regularly check and fluff the layers as needed, especially if you're in damp conditions. Historical results show that even a modest layer dramatically improves warmth compared to conventional blankets alone. The World War II wadding layer, you know, really demonstrates a larger lesson about survival and historical ingenuity. Soldiers discovered that, well, material alone doesn't guarantee warmth. Structure, layering and air retention are far more important. They turned simple, available materials into a system that actually outperformed standard gear in one of the harshest climates of the 20th century. For anyone interested in practical history, survivalism or low-tech camping, the wadding layer is honestly a timeless lesson in observation, adaptation and the clever use of simple resources. If you found this guide valuable, make sure you subscribe to In the Beginning and, you know, share this video with fellow history enthusiasts and survivalists.
Preserving and applying these forgotten techniques keeps our connection to practical knowledge alive and ensures that modern adventurers can, well, learn from the ingenuity that kept soldiers alive through freezing winters and extreme conditions.